much of a claim to it. The conflicts of the outside world had little impact on daily life for the Yorkians. To them, the ravages, the ravages of the Yellow Neck uprising in the deep interior of the Earth Kingdoms were a less interesting story than the wayward flying bison that had gotten loose from the Air Temple and not the thatching of a few roofs last week. Despite being seagoers, they probably couldn't name any of the d dreaded pirate leaders carving up the eastern waters in open defiance of the Bosing Saint Navy. All in all, Yokia Port might as well not have been on the map, which meant for Jiansu and Kelsing's desperate, sacrilegious little experiment, it was perfect. Jiansu trudged uphill in the wet, mucky snowfall, his neck prickling from the bundled straw cloak around his shoulders. He passed the wooden pillar that marked the spiritual center of this village without sparking it a glance. There was nothing on the sides or on top of it. It was just a bare log driven upright into the ground of a circular courtyard. It wasn't curved, carved with any decorations, which seemed lazy for a town where nearly every adult had a working knowledge of carpentry. There, the post grudgingly said to the any nearby spirits, hope you're happy. Whether houses lined the broad, broad, eroded avenue, poking steeply into the air like the spear points, his destination was the larger two-story meeting hall at the end. Kao Seng had set up shop there yesterday, saying he needed as much floor space as possible for the test. He also claimed that the location enjoyed some auspicious wind currents using the very solemn and holy method of licking his fingers and holding it up in the air, whatever helped Jiansu said a quick prayer for the guardian of the divine log as he pulled off of his snow boots, laid them on the porch, and dug through the door curtains. The interior of the hall was surprisingly large with far corners draped in shadows and thick blanked walls cut from what must have been truly massive trees. The air smelled of resin. Ten very long, faded, faded yellow cloths stretched across the worn floorboards. A row of toys lay on each other, evenly spaced like a seabed. A bison whistle, a wicker ball, a mash, a mish, mish a pin, blob that might have been a stuffed turtle duck, a coiled wild bone, whale bone spring, one of those flappy drums that made noise as you spun it and a fourth between your palms. The toys looked as worn and beaten as the outside of the building. Kelsang knelt at the far end of the cloths. The airbender monk was busy placing more kick anchors. With a carefulness and precious precision that rivaled an acupuncturist setting their needles. As if it mattered whether the miniature boat sailed east or west, he stayed on his hands and knees, shuffling his great bulk sideways, his billowing orange robes and weary black beard hanging so low, they made another sweep over a floor that had already been scrubbed clean. I didn't know where, I didn't know there were so many toys, Jianzu said to his old friend. He spotted a large white marble that looked too close to the edge of the fabric and, with a graceful extension of his wrist, levitated it with earth bending in the front of Kelsing. It hovered like a fly, waiting for his attention. Kelsing didn't look up as he plucked the marble out of the air and put it right back where it started. There's thousands I'd ask you to help, but you wouldn't do it right. Jiansu, Jiansu's head hurt as the statement. At the statement, at this point, they were well past doing it right. How did you change about Dorcher's mind about giving you the relics, he asked. The same way you convinced Lu Bei Fong to say his admirals, to say his ad, uh, my fault, I just lost my spot. The same way you convinced Lu Bei Fong to let us admin, administer the air nomad test in the earth cycle. Kao Sing said calmly, as he re-centered a wooden top, I didn't. Look, like a certain friend of theirs from the water tribe always said it was better to ask for forgiveness than wait for permission. 
And as far as Johnson was concerned at that time, for waiting had long since passed. When Avatar Krug, the keeper of balance and peace in the world, the bridge between spirits and humans passed away at the ripe old age of 33-33. The only time Krug had ever been early for anything, it became the duty of his friends, his teachers, and other prominent vendors to find a new Avatar, recreate into the next nation of the elemental cycle, Earth, Fire, Air, Water, and then Earth again, in order as unchanging as the seasons, a process stretching back nearly a thousand generations before Kurok, and one that would hope, hopefully continue for thousands of years. Except this time, it wasn't working. It had been seven years since Kirk's death, seven years of fruitless searching Jansu had poured over every available record from the four nations going back hundreds of years. And the hunt for the Avatar had never faltered like this in documented history. No one knew why. The revered elders traded guests behind closed doors. The world was impure and had been abandoned by the spirits. The Earth Kingdom lacked co cohesion, or maybe it was the water tribes in the poles that needed to unify. The airbenders had to come down from their mountains and get their hands dirty instead of preaching. The debate went on and on. John Duke cares less about aborting, aborting blame and more about the fact that he and Kelsang had let down their friend again, the only serious decree of Kirk's before he departed from the living was that his closest companions find the next avatar and do, do, do right by them. And so far they'd failed. Spectacularly. Spectacularly. Right now. There should have been a happy, burbling seven-year-old earth water, earth avatar in the care of their loving family, being watched over by a collection of the best, wisest benders of the world. A child in the midst of being prepared for the assumption of their duties at the age of 16. Instead, they were only a game. There was, there were only. Oh, oh. Instead, there was only a gaping void that threw more dangers by the day. John Su and the other master did their best to keep the missing avatars a secret. Missing avatar a secret, but it was no use. The cruel, the power hungry, the lawless people who normally had the most to fear for the avatar were starting to feel. Chaos is shifting in there. In their favor. Like sand sharks responding to the slightest vibrations on pure instinct, they tested their limits, probed new grounds. Time was running out. Kelsang finished setting up with setting up when the noon gong struck. The sun was high enough to melt snow off the roof, and the dripping flow of water pattered on the ground like like rain. The silhouettes of villagers and their children opening up for the test could be seen outside through the paper screen windows. The air was full of excited chatter. No more waiting, Jiantu thought. This happens now. Earth Avatar were traditionally identified by directional geomancy, a series of rituals designed to win, win now through the largest and most populous the four nations as efficiently as possible. Each time a special set of bone trigrams was cast and inter interpreted by the earthbending masters. Half the earth kingdom was ruled out as the location of the newborn avatar. Then from the remaining territory another half and then another half again. The possible locations kept shrinking until the searchers were brought to the doorstep of the earth avatar child. It was a quick way to cover ground and entirely fitting to the earth bending state of mind. A question of logistics simple to the point of being brutal, and it normally worked on the first try. John Su had been a part of expeditions sent by the bones to barn, to barren fields, empty game, gym caverns below Bossing Se, a patch of the Sea Wong desert so dry that not even the sand vendors bothered with it. Lu Bei Fong had read the trigrams. King Buro of Omashu gave it a shot. They allowed the gardener to her turn. The masters worked their way down the earth bending hierarchy until John 
Tatsu racked up his fair share of misses as well. His friendship with Karuk brought him no special privileges when it came to the next avatar. After the last attempt had placed him on an iceberg in the North Pole with only Turtle Seas as potential candidates, Jiangsu became open to radical suggestions. A drunken commiseration with the Kalsings spawned a promising new idea. If the ways of the Earth Kingdom weren't working, why not try another nation's method? After all, wasn't the Avatar the only bender of all four elements, an honorary citizen of the entire world? That was why the two of them were wiping their noses with the traditional tradition and trying the air nomad way of identifying the Avatar. Yokia would be a practice run, a safer place far from the terminal of land and sea where they could take notes and fix problems. If Yokia went smoothly, they could convince their elders to expand the test further throughout the Earth Kingdom. The Air Nomads method were simple in theory. Out of the many of the, out of the many toys laid out, only four belonged to avatars of eras gone by. Each seven year old child by the village would be brought in and presented with the dazzling array of playthings. The one who was drawn to the four special toys in a remembrance of their past lives was the Avatar Reborn, a process as elegant and harmonious as the Airbenders themselves. In theory, in practice, it was chaos, pure and un unhinged. It was a disaster, the likes of which the four nations had never witnessed. Jiansu hadn't thought of what might happen after the children who failed. The tests were told to leave their selections behind and make room for the next candidate, the tears. The wailing, the screaming, trying to get toy trying to get toys away from the kids who had only moments before been promised that they could have their pick. There was no force in existence stronger than a child's righteous fury at being robbed. The parents were more the parents were worse, maybe air nomad caretakers handled the rejection of their young ones with grace and humility, but families in the other nations were made, weren't made up of monks and nuns, especially in the Earth's kingdom, where all beds were off once it came to blood ties. Villagers will meet share. Alright, my bad. Villagers whom he shared friendly greetings with in the days leading up to the test become snarling canyon crawlers once they had been told that their precious little Jay Armorai was not in fact the most important child in the world, as they'd secretly known all along. More than a few swore up and down that they'd seen their offsprings play with invisible spirits or bend earth and air at the same time. Kelsane would push back gently, are you sure your child wants earthbending during a normal breeze? Or are you sure your baby wasn't simply playing? Some couldn't take a hint, especially the village captain, as soon as they'd passed over her daughter, Oma, or something. They'd given him a look of utter contempt and demanded to see a higher ranking master. Sorry, lady. John took thought after Kelsing spent nearly ten minutes talking her down. We can't be all spe we can't all be special. For that time I'm not negotiating a salary with you, John Su shouted in the face of a particularly blunt farmer. Being the avatar is not a paid position. The stock man shrugged. Sounds like a waste of time then. I'll take my child and go. Out of the corner of his eye, John Tu caught Kelsing's frantically waving his hands making a cut-off sign at the neck. The little girl had wandered, had wandered over to the early flying toy that once encountered an ancient avatar and was starting at, staring at it intently. Huh? They weren't intending to go. Huh? They weren't intending to get a genuine result today, but picking the first item correctly was already a problem. Too improbable to risk stopping now. Okay, Johnson said. This would have to come out of his own pocket. Fifty silvers a year if she's the Avatar. Sixty-five silvers a year if she's the Avatar. And ten if she's not. Why would I pay you if she's not the Avatar? Johnson roared. Kelsey coughed and thumped loudly on the floor. 
the girl I picked up the whirling. The girl I picked up the whirling gig and was eyeing the drum. Two of the four correct out of thousands. Holy shoot. I mean, of course, John Tzu said quickly deal. They shook hands. It would be ironic, a prank worthy of Karako's sense of humor to have his reincarnation be found as a result of his peasant's greed. And the very last child in line for testing to boot, John Tzu nearly chuckled. Now the girl had the drum in her arms as well. She walked over to a stuffed hog monkey. Helsing was beside him, self with excitement, his neck threatening to bur burst through the wooden beads wrapped around it. John Tzu felt lightheaded, hope boshed against his rib cage, banging to be let out after so many years trapped inside. The girl wound. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the girl wound up her foot and stomped on the stuffed animal as hard as she could. Took in her 
it's sadder to stay, stay and avoid the subject of her parents for now. Kyoshi, would you like a toy? Are you sure she isn't too old? Chanta said, she's bigger than some of the teenagers. Hush you. Kelsing said, he made a sweeping gesture at the health festival with relics for Kyoshi's benefit. The unveiling of so many playthings at once had an entrance interesting effect on most of the children, but Kyoshi didn't gasp or smile or move a muscle. Instead, she maintained eye contact with Kelsing and began until he blinked. As quick as a whip she bam, she scampered by him, stacking an object off the floor and ran back to where she was, standing on the standing on the porch. She guarded Kelsing and Jiansu for their responses as intently as their as they watched her, Kelsey glanced at Jiansu and titled his head at the clay turtle. Kyoshi clutched her chest. One of the four true relics, not a single candidate had come anywhere near today. They should have been as excited for her as they'd been for even for even little Susu, but Jiansu's heart was clouded with doubt. It was hard to believe they'd be so lucky after the previous head fake. Good choice, Kelsey said, but I've got a surprise for you. You can have three more. Four whole toys to yourself when you like that. Jiangsu sensed a shift in the girl's stance. A tremor in her foundation that was obvious through the wooden floorboards. Yes. She would like three more toys very much. What child wouldn't? But in her mind, the promise of more was dangerous. A lie des designed to hurt her. If she loosened her grip on the single prize she held right now, she would end up with nothing. Punished for believing in the kindness of this stranger, Koshi stood her head. Her knuckles whitened around the clay turtle. It's okay, Kelsey said. You don't have to put that down. That's the whole point. You can choose different. Hey. The girl took a step back in another. And then, before they could react, she was sprinting down the hill with the one of a kind. Centuries old avatar relic in her hands, halfway along the street, she took a sharp turn like an experienced fugitive throwing of a pursuer and disappeared in the space between two houses. Giantu closed his eyelids against the sun. The light came through them in scarlet blots. He could feel his own pulse. His mind was somewhere else right now. Instead of Yogia, he stood in the center of an unnamed village deep in the interior of the Earth Kingdom. Newly liberated by Zhu Ping and Anne and the Yellow Necks. Zhu Ping and, and the Zhu Ping. Okay. By Zhu Ping Anne and the Yellow Necks. That was a confusing sentence. In this walking dream, the stench of rotting flesh soaked through his clothes and in the cries of survivors haunted the winds. Next to him, an official messenger who had been ca carried there by Pelinquin. Read from his scroll, spending minute after minute listing the Earth Kingdom's honorifics, only to end by telling Jiansu that reinforcements from His Majesty's army would not be coming to help. He tried to shake free of the memory, but the past had set its jacket hooks into him. Now that he sat at a negotiation table made of pure ice, and on the other side was Tulok, Lord of the Fifth Nation Pirates, the elderly Cors Corsair laughed his consumption, consumptive laugh at the notion he might honor his grandfather's pr promise to leave the southern coastlines at the continent, continent in peace. His spattered blood and blem over the accords drafted by the avatar Ying Jin in her own holy hand. While his daughter lieutenant watched by his side, her soulless gaze boring into Jiantu like he was so much in prayer. In these times and in many others, he should have been at the right hand of the avatar, the ultimate authority who could bend the world to their will. Instead, he was alone, facing down great beasts of the land and 
see the jaws closing in and closing, encasing the kingdom in darkness. Kelsey yanked him back into the prison with a bruising slap on the back. Come on, he said. But the way you look, people think you just lost your nation's most important so, uh, cultural artifact. The airbenders got a humor and ability to take setbacks. Stride was normally a great comfort to Chianzu, but right now he wanted to punch his friend in his stupid bitter face. He was composed. His own features. He composed his own features. We need to go after her, he said. Kelsing. Kelsing pursed his lips, and it would feel bad to take the relic away from a child who has so little. She can hang on to it. I'll go back to the temple here. Face of Dorji's wrath alone. There's no need for you to implicate yourself. John Tung didn't know what counted for wrath among airbenders. But that wasn't the issue here. You'd run. You'd ruin the air nomad's test to make a child happy. He said incredulously. It'll find its way back to where it belongs. Kelsey looked around, paused, and paused. Then his smile faded as if this little plot of a town or a harsh dose of reality that was only now taking effect. Eventually, he sighed. Maybe. And that's the end of that chapter. Sorry if I was like messing up like a bunch of times, but I, I'm not gonna lie, I, I was. I was like about to fall asleep. I was like relaxing myself. That was that was really good. That was a really good first chapter. Kill she introduced, you know, she got the she got the relic. You know, she she's the avatar. But uh yeah, that's gonna do it all for this for this for this video. Thank you for watching. Let me know if I should read like the rest of this book.